Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today I was taking a look at a blue-green Merfolk deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Kumena, Tyrant of Araska, a 3-mana 2-4 legendary Merfolk Shaman that can tap another untapped Merfolk we control to become unblockable until end of turn, can tap 3 untapped Merfolk to draw a card, this ignores Summoning Sickness, and we can even tap Kumena to activate this ability. And finally, we can tap 5 untapped Merfolk we control to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each Merfolk we control. So this deck is all about Merfolk creatures and Merfolk synergies. So let's take a look at our fishy friends, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have Benthic Biomancer, a 1-1 that can adapt 1 for 2 mana, and whenever 1 or more plus 1 counters are placed on it, we get to draw a card and then discard a card. So also plays well with Kumena's last ability. Merfolk Windrobber mostly just a 1-1 flyer. Mistcaller could potentially counter opposing reanimation strategies by sacrificing it and then exiling those creatures. The Mistcloaked Herald is a 1-1 that cannot be blocked. Shoreline Scout could replace a card in our hand with a Tropical Island, the original blue-green dual land. We've got Jade Bearer, which enters putting a plus one plus one counter on another target Merfolk we control. And Kumena Speaker, essentially a 1-mana 2-2 Merfolk. Then at 2 mana, we've got Brineborn Cutthroat, a 2 1 with Flash, that gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we cast a spell during an opponent's turn, so it plays well with the counter spells in our deck. River Sneak, a 1 1 that's unblockable, gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever another Merfolk enters under our control. Shaper's Apprentice, a 2 1 that gets flying as long as we control another Merfolk. Silver Gill, a 2 1 that draws a card when it enters, so one of the better 2 drops in the deck. And as an additional cost to cast it, we have to reveal a Merfolk from our hand or pay 3 mana. Thieving Skydiver, a 2 1 flyer, can also be kicked to potentially steal opposing artifacts. We've got Master of the Pearl Trident as one of the many lords in the deck. This one a 2 2, giving other Merfolk creatures we control plus 1 plus 1 and Island Walk. So if the opponent controls an island, even on their dual lands potentially, then our creatures can attack unblocked. We've got the Merfolk Trickster can be flashed in to tap an opposing creature down and remove all its abilities until end of turn. Deep Root Elite puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a Merfolk whenever another Merfolk enters. Guardian Gladewalker, a 1-1 Changeling, so it has all creature types including Merfolk, and when it enters it can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. Masked Vandal, a 1-3 Changeling, so once again also Merfolk, and when it enters we can exile an opposing artifact or enchantment, as long as we can exile a creature card from our graveyard. The Branchwalker, a 2-1 that explores when it enters, so we reveal the top card of our library. If it's a land, we can draw it. If it's a non-land, we can decide to put it in our graveyard or keep it on top. And then the Branchwalker also picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter. The Mistbinder is a 2-2 giving author Merfolk we control plus 1 plus 1. Skydiver, a 1-1 flyer that when it enters puts a counter on one of our creatures. And for 5 mana, we can proliferate, meaning we can choose any number of target permanents or players that have counters on them, and then add another one of those counters to those permanents or players, so it plays very well with all the plus one counters in our deck. And then Metallic Mimic, a 2-1 shapeshifter. As it enters, we can choose Merfolk, so it turns into a Merfolk, and then other Merfolk will come into play with an additional plus one plus one counter on them. Then at 3 mana we've got Glasspool Mimic, which can enter as a copy of another creature, so great at copying our various lords to make our creatures bigger. We've got the Marrow Reachery as another lord giving Merfolk plus 1 plus 1, and whenever we cast a Merfolk spell we can either tap or untap target permanent, so we can tap opposing creatures down, or maybe untap our lands to keep up interaction, or to cast additional spells afterwards. Then Kopala protects our team by making the opponent pay 2 more mana to target our creatures with spells or abilities. The Merfolk God is indestructible as long as we control at least two Author Merfolk, can draw a card when it attacks, and gives Author Merfolk we control a Ward 1 on a 3 4 body, so very good deal. The Jungleborn is a 2 2 joined by a 1 1 hexproof Merfolk token, so getting two bodies on one card, great at enabling Kumena's various abilities to maybe start drawing cards right away. Realmwalker is a changeling that lets us cast Merfolk off the top of our deck. Vine Shaper a 1-3 that when it enters puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target merfolk we control. Jade Light a 2-1 that can explore twice when it enters. Swift Warden a 3-3 with flash so we can play that instant speed and give a merfolk we control hexproof until end of turn to protect it. Bloodline Pretender a changeling that picks up plus 1 plus 1 counters whenever another merfolk enters. And Faceless Agent a changeling that can seek another merfolk when it enters, so another nice 2-for-1. 
Then at 4 mana, Herald of Secret Streams says creatures we control with plus 1 plus 1 counters on them cannot be blocked, so great synergy with Kumena's last ability, and of course there's plenty of plus 1 plus 1 counters throughout the deck. Seafloor Oracle a 2-3, saying whenever a merfolk we control deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card, so great synergy with the evasive merfolk in the deck, even with Kumena's first ability, and the more creatures get to connect with the opponent, the more cards we get to draw. Then Tempest Caller can be an awesome finisher, a 2-3 that when it enters, taps all creatures target opponent controls. The Forerunner of the Heralds can find any merfolk and put it on top of our deck, also grows when other merfolk enter. And Zegana can give creatures we control with plus one plus one counters on them trample, can also adapt to then pick up four plus one plus one counters, and when it enters also draws a card if we control a creature with a counter on it. And then at 5 mana, Tatiova with a few fetch lands to go with it, saying whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we gain one life and draw a card. And finally, Tishana, Voice of Thunder, with power toughness equal to the number of cards in our hand, so we have to be careful not to play Tishana as our last card, since we have no maximum hand size, and when it enters we get to draw a card for each creature we control, which can also get out of hand. Then going over the non-creature spells, mostly we've got some cheap counter spells with the wash away to counter the opposing commander for just one mana, and then a two mana disdainful stroke, memory lapse, negate, and counter spell, and then heroic intervention, also a pseudo counter spell, as it can maybe counter an opposing sweeper to save our team by giving them hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. And that one mana dive down can also protect a key creature. Then we've got arcane signet at two for ramp. And at 3 mana, Icon of Ancestry can pump the team, maybe find a Merfolk in the top 3 to provide card advantage. Herald's Horn makes our Merfolk 1 cheaper, can also find a Merfolk on top to put into our hand. The Bears of Lejara synergizes with all the shapeshifters in our deck, as it will turn all of them into 4-4 four, four creatures, which can then gang up to kill an opposing creature. The Cultivate is an additional ramp card. Deeproot Waters says whenever we cast, a Merfolk spell make a 1-1 one, one token with Hexproof, so great synergy with Kumena as well. Crashing Tide as a bounce spell that we can cast at instant speed if we control a merfolk and also draws a card. And then at 4 mana, Aquatic Incursion also makes two hexproof merfolk tokens, can also make one of our merfolk unblockable for 4 mana. Distant Melody will draw a card for each merfolk we control. Guardian Project draws a card when a merfolk enters. And then at 5 mana we've got Vanquisher's Banner, giving our merfolk plus 1 plus 1 and drawing a card when we play a merfolk. Reflections of Lejara will double the creatures we play. And then at 6 mana, Immortal Sun shuts down opposing planeswalkers as we don't control any, gives our team plus 1 plus 1, makes our cards cheaper, and draws an extra card each turn, so it does a lot of work for the deck. Then the mana base, pretty straightforward, no real utility lands, even though you could include like a Karn's Bastion to maybe proliferate, but we do have a lot of double blue cards in the deck, so all the mana fixing is necessary. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Archlich, which uh, recently got a small change in alchemy, nothing major. Just means that we can no longer decide to sacrifice a creature, opponent will always get a 2-2 zombie token. And uh, yeah, our hand is reasonable, could use a few extra lands of course, but Cutthroat plays well with Counterspell, as well as Crashing Tide. So hope to pick up those lands. And then Counterspell could maybe counter something like a Paradox Engine, which is often what these uh, Lich decks are all about. So we get to Flash and Cutthroat, opponent may kill at end of turn, but then maybe resolve a Deep Root Waters, which is not too bad. Alright, so Cutthroat down. I think I'm okay tapping out here. And then whenever we play a merfolk, we'll get a 1-1 hexproof token. Alright, so opponent gets to venture. And uh yeah, probably fine to play my commander. And then Masked Vandal should be able to deal with some artifact or enchantment eventually. And then Vanquisher's Banner, also one of the better cards to have in this type of matchup, where we can expect our creatures to die a lot. 
Ah, cool may not down. So really just hoping for land. So I'm not gonna fetch yet to increase my odds of drawing a land. Reflections, another awesome engine card if we can get it down. Another really just need land five here to get things going. If our opponent animates hive, we can just bounce it. Gilded Lotus. We could let resolve and then destroy with a vandal. It's no paradox engine, but we still have a counter spell available. Or I could play a reflections first. And then uh, maybe get double masked vandal in the future or play a vanquisher's banner. I guess. We only have the one creature in the graveyard, so I won't be able to exile two artifacts with the Vandal, even if we copy it. So maybe better to play a banner here. Now it is scary to let the opponent untap with all this Gilded Lotus mana. But on the other hand, we do have a bounce spell to maybe bounce back whatever they cheat into play here. So we'll try this approach. And then hope they don't animate Hive to exile my creature in the graveyard, since I need it for Masked Vandal. Uh, Umbral Juke makes me sack my Hexproof token, fair enough. And what's next? They can just replay their commander a few times. Hedron Archive, okay, so they're just missing a Paradox Engine here to combo off. Opponent in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, so the payoff is pretty big once they can complete it, but it's a long way. Alright, so... Probably start with a Masked Vandal, since again there's only the one creature in the graveyard for me to exile. And get rid of the Gilded Lotus. And then I can add Herald to the board. Sure, I guess that's fine. Make a token, draw a card. Probably no need to keep up Counterspell just yet. Even if they have another board wipe, we can rebuild pretty quickly. Infernal Grasp kills Vandal, so... Don't think there's going to be another Sweeper incoming. And Realm Walker, another nice source of card advantage. So they can play it two more times after this. Opponent might make some skeleton tokens. That's fine. Opponent did keep both cards on top. So maybe they're just gonna cast spells over the top instead. And they found Arcane Signet. Alright, that's not too bad. So, now what? Could go for Realm Walker, see what's on top. And then keep up Counterspell Crashing Tide. Or could resolve Reflections and then keep up Counterspell. Countering the Lich means they just have to pay 5 mana to replay it. So it slows them down a little bit, I suppose. Might be alright. And then... Yeah, I guess Reflections is fine here. Name Merfolk. So we'll counter the Lich. And then they might not have the mana to replay it twice. Of 
opponent gets to scry three. And a Tomb of Legends can accumulate a lot of card advantage as well. But yeah, we did draw a lot of our powerful artifacts and enchantments for this type of matchup. So Realm Walker, see if there's a Merfolk on top. Get to make a copy. Draw cards. So all our engines are running. And a Jungleborn we can play. We'll draw the Skydiver. And then I might want to hang on to the Skydiver in case they did find a Sweeper here, since we should have enough in play to kill them next turn. So they've got a lot of mana, can potentially draw a lot of cards, but they do need to find an answer because they're very far behind on board. And yeah, that's just a bunch of spot removal that's not going to help. Feed the Swarm could destroy one of my enchantments, but they also need a Sweeper to go with it. Tome of Legends draws, looking for another board wipe. And yeah, opponent cannot find it and concedes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Kenrith, the Returned King. So having some cheap counter spells is pretty nice. And then, yeah, Mimic into Pioneer could apply some good pressure. I'll try it. So if we can get some early board presence going with Mimic, Pioneer, maybe even Kumena, and then just hide behind a wall of counter spells, that's a pretty good recipe against slower control decks. We'll see if the Mimic survives. Alright, Sithis, so maybe our opponent more of an enchantment deck, which does change maybe the texture of the game a little bit. Now that we got our value, I'll offer the trade. They might be on a five color shrines deck, preparing for the upcoming Kamigawa. All right, so land four is good. And then I could add a Skydiver to the board to keep up a counter spell in case of a Wrath. And then probably play Skydiver now. If they had some early ramp artifact, they probably would have played it already. And play this before offering the trade for Mimic. All right, opponent was keeping up Essence Scatter. Do I want to memory lapse that? Not really. So we'll attack. Opponent takes it. And then probably gonna lapse first and then Disdainful Stroke. Saddle of the Wilds is a type of card I probably don't have to counter since it doesn't actually impact the board in any way. All right, so now I get to play Kumena. And then probably just hit for three draw card. Although it's close with just hitting for seven. If I hit them for seven down to a nine. Next turn I could present lethal, although they might finally trade for Sithis. Or they might finally start gaining life off of it. I think drawing a card for now is fine. Alright, opponent jumps anyway, so they might have a sweeper they want to cast. And then if we can eventually play Mortal Sun and keep up Counterspell for one mana, that would be ideal. So Wrath... I probably Memory Lapse, just to make them replay the next turn. Although they might have another counter response, they don't. And then I'll draw. This can name blue. And then a Shoreline Scout is not necessary. And then play Biomancer. 
get to loot. Uh, lands I probably don't need anymore. And I think we just smash face now. Opponent replays Wrath, which we can now Disdainful Stroke, and nothing should have changed compared to last turn. And that should lock it up. Can even play Mortal Sun before attacking. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Talsri, Beacon of Unity, 5 color party, and our hand's a little bit too slow, I think, really need a 1 or 2 drop. Alright, this could work, given that Shoreline Scout can uh, actually pick up an extra land for us. It's not perfect, but I'll try it. Tatiova might be the one to go here. And then, turn two, we could Memory Lapse. Vine Shaper on three. So mana with Sliver is a little unexpected. But I guess it's still two mana ramp. Malison. I guess will Memory Lapse, since they cannot replay it with their current mana situation. And I just want to spend my mana in a useful manner. Right, and a drover. Fair enough. So here... Could go for a Vine Shaper Mystic. And smash. And then next turn go maybe Kumena plus a tapped Glass Pool if I didn't draw land. Could also bounce whatever they play. Just want to increase the pressure a little bit. Nylia, okay. And a one mana, Malison now. Signet's not bad. So, decision, decision. Could go for Signet into Mimic, play a tapped Glass Pool Mimic. Don't think there's anything I absolutely need to bounce here. And then we're setting up our Distance Melody nicely. Could also take the card draw approach with Kumena. But I think developing Signet's more important. And then... I imagine it's fine to play that as a land since we're about to draw a ton of cards with Melody. And maybe we'll go for Crashing Tide plus Kumena instead. Who is Zalto? 7 3 Trampler. Sample comes into play tapped, unfortunately. So I could Crashing Tide bounce Zalto, which enables a reasonable attack. Ideally, I would draw an untapped land to then play Kumena as well. Or I could play Kumena first, see if I draw land. If not, play a temple and keep the tide for next turn. Yeah, it's a close call. I think starting out with Kumena might be better here. And then tap 3 and tap Merfolk. Keep the scout to attack. And I found land, so now I could Crashing Tide. Could even Crashing Tide at instant speed if I wanted to. Which is also a fair option. And I guess Zalto doesn't even have a party type, so it doesn't make Talsri cheaper, so we can wait. Of course, Shoreline Scout does lose its plus one power bonus. But we could technically have a Merfolk we can flash in, which they might respect. So now I can trade Scout for Malison, although it does make my Melody worse. So I'll probably end up just bouncing Salto here. Salto. 
So Malice and Dos hit us to venture once again. Opponent now on the second level. Still a long ways to go. And Ashaya, the play. Fair enough. Dos turn on Nylea. And a Vanquisher's Banner. Not a bad draw either. So if I go for Distant Melody, I'm likely to find another cheap Merfolk I can play to maybe start putting counters on the entire team. To try and go bigger than what the opponent is doing. If I play Banner, I get to pump the team, but I'm not really attacking here. So let's go for a Distant Melody before playing Temple, in case I need the untapped land. And name Merfolk. Alright, we found our Mistbinder. So I get to scry into hopefully something useful. Immortal Sun cannot be bad. Although another cheap Merfolk would also be fine. I guess we'll still keep it. And then play Mistbinder. And then I think it's counters on the team as opposed to drawing. Zendikar's Royal, good combo with Ashaya. Creatures count as lands will enable landfall. Opponents down to two cards in hand at least, but they still have their commander as a potential card draw engine. And the Maelstrom Pull is going to kill Kumena, but not before we use its ability. Alright, so probably want an Immortal Sun. And then that's it for now. Probably no attacks, but then next turn we maybe get to go off a little bit with a cheaper Banner and Kumena to draw more cards. That being said, our opponent does have a Tantana Shaya. And they're making quite a few tokens as well. Nylea, another potential mana sink. So yeah, interesting game so far. Cultivates, not exactly what I was looking for, and our opponent doesn't have any artifacts for me to steal. So kick things off with a Vanquisher's Banner. Play one mana Skydiver. Herald of Secret Streams is an awesome draw, could make our team unblockable. Although our opponent did prevent one creature from attacking this turn. So do we still have enough right now, or do we need to play Kumena first? Uh, yeah, that should be just enough for lethal here. So let's go for it. And yeah, opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Halana and Alena. So red-green can be quite scary. My hand is low to the ground with a Kumena Speaker Jade Bearer start. Although that kind of goes against the Guardian Project a little bit. Now that being said, we can play turn 3 Kumena to start drawing as well. To then fuel the Guardian Project, so maybe this is not a bad start. And then turn 2 I can play the Temple as well to get that out of the way. Alright, opponent does have turn 1 Lander Elves, so that's always a scary start. And then probably don't need to cultivate here. Just looking for Merfolk creatures. Maybe some interaction for their commander. And then next turn most likely just play Kumena, draw card. If all three creatures are still in play. 
Ah, eh, never mind. And Shade Bearer gets stomped. So, I'm gonna play Kumena and attack for three. And still waiting for another creature of the top. Partners can come down, put two counters on the elf. And then, yeah, we might be in a bit of trouble here. Miscaller, we can hold for later. Just play Guardian Project and, uh, yeah, hit for three, I guess. And then want to try and find as much creature interaction as possible. Some of our merfolk then maybe tap stuff down could be useful. Or bound spells. Crawler gives their creatures trample. Plays well with the uh, commander as well. And now the partners can add three counters to a creature instead of just two. So that's going to be a 7-6 trampling bone crusher attacking. At least get to block here. Interventions, interesting. Let's start with Miss Caller, see where we go from there. Ooh, uh, Tishana. Need a little bit more mana for that one. So I probably have to try and set up a triple block, then use Intervention, and then I can still draw with a team as well. But yeah, I don't love my opponents getting to do their thing with uh, partners. At least we somewhat disguise the heroic intervention with Kumena. Currently I could triple block Bone Crusher Giant to take it out at least. Primal Might, we can at the very least save Kumena here, make our team indestructible to try and soak up some damage, but the partner still got a nice power buff, so it's gonna add a ton of counters to Bone Crusher Giant, and of course their entire team still tramples. So this is going to leave a mark, and I'm not even sure we can survive this attack. Can draw here, see what we pick up. Alright, we're at two but uh, we'll have to draw something pretty good here to get out of this. So I can play a Vine Shaper Mystic. And that's about it. Hope to draw something off Guardian Project. Just a land. So I can activate Kumena on the way out. Although at this point, I don't think there's anything that saves us. Merfolk Wind Robber gets to draw. Cutthroats can flash that in. But yeah, the trample's just too much here. So, probably not even worth it to attack. Can flash this in, technically draw a second card of Kumena after drawing with Project. Yeah, maybe in a world where if they don't have Trample I can Chum Block and maybe draw my way out of it, but that's just not happening right now. So let's see what's on top before we die here. Branch Walker. And an island. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Yarok the Desecrated. Soon enters the battlefield deck. My hand is not ideal, don't have a 2 drop. So I think I'm gonna take a mulligan to look for a better opening. 
All right, this could work. The brutal lead goes a long way. And then we've got some powerful three drops as well. So just hoping for some untapped lands, especially island. This one comes into play tapped, but can maybe play the next turn alongside an apprentice. So that's not too bad. Opponent ramping with arcane signets. Mistbinder, I probably want to wait on until I have a bigger board presence. And then probably pump itself for now. Although I might want to stack up more counters on my evasive threat. Conundrum, we don't really care about since we're not ramping. As our opponent ramps themselves. Okay. So attempting to play Reachery so I can maybe start untapping my lands to then uh, cast more spells, so it kind of counts as ramping in a weird way. Kumena to then tap three creatures draw a card as an option, as I could maybe draw a land. Or I could get the Murpho God down, which can also provide card advantage when it attacks, but it's not going to be able to attack into a Yorok. Unless I put enough counters on it, I guess, but that seems ambitious. So I think Reachery for now is fine. And that can maybe also tap down their 3-5 Death Touch Lifelinker to get past it. And hope there's no sweepers in our future, because don't really have the tools to beat those. Risen Reef is a good one. And our opponent not going for Yarok first. So maybe they have some other interaction they want to cast here. Wash away, great answer to Yarok. So I could even play a 3-drop, like the Murpho God or Kumena, untap my dual land, keep up Wash away. That seems appealing, and then probably go for the God for the extra protection. It's also indestructible in case I do have a sweeper. Although it has to be a specific sweeper. Yeah, I think this is fine. And counter on maybe Regery or more on the flyer. Opponent takes it. Well, I'm interested to see what happens next. This is a perfect solution. One mana counter. And can't imagine our opponent coming back from this. Neoform to get a 4-drop. Well, that actually would have been quite effective with the Yarok in play. Maybe get like a Chupacabra to try and kill two creatures. Hostage Taker still pretty effective. But I think we'll manage here. Can just play any old creature, tap the Hostage Taker down. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Orvar, the Al form. So not sure what to expect. I do have a wash away as an answer for it. Couple tap lands, which is not ideal, but we do have a lot of flash creatures, so we can actually play well with the cutthroat, also play as well with the counter spells. So yeah, maybe I'll give this a shot and then really hope for an untapped lands. So I can play turn two cutthroat at the very least. Alright, Harbor kind of punishes me for not playing the Expanse on turn 1 and fetching a basic. But at least I can play my 3 drops on curve now. Okay, so might still want to leave up Disdainful Stroke, or I could go for Untapped Lands, Pass, if they go for their Commander, Cutthroat, plus Wash Away, get a counter on it right away. Because, yeah, if I keep up Disdainful Stroke, 
might as well keep up wash away and develop my board at the same time. But into three upon mana our opponents less likely to commit their commander. It's gonna be a midnight clock instead. Might have wanted to flash and cut through it in response so they cannot play a two mana counter here. But that's fine. Okay, that comes into play untapped. So at the very least, want to keep up Wash Away. Swift Warden would also be good, or I could go for Kumena, which has a decent chance of actually getting countered by the opponent. So maybe prefer going for like a Bloodline Pretender. And then keep up Wash Away. Play the land first in case of like a Sensor or some other conditional counterspell. There's just more 2-mana counterspells for my commander between opposing copies of Wash Away. There's the counter legendary spell. Alright, opponent bounces my pretender. That's fine. And hopefully now they feel safe to tap out for their commander. Soul Blade Jin instead. Okay. I think I just replay Pretender and then uh, pass. Memory Lapse. Yeah, I guess we'll add that to the list of counter spells we can keep up. But I really need to get something going on the board here. counter Orvar. Opponent might be able to counter back. That worked. Jin hits for four. And a Mero Reach Wreath at play. Okay, interesting. So probably want to hold Swift Warden for the opponent's turn to pump Cutthroat. So for now, play Kumena, and then could hit for six, or I can draw a card. I think I want to draw a card. Opponent could have also traded, which we probably want to avoid. So two cards in hand, Midnight Clock about halfway. And the Emeritus, I probably want to counter. Could memory lapse it, so they replayed next turn. That's probably fine. And we get to draw. Masked Vandal could blow up a Midnight Clock at some points. Do not have a Merfolk in the graveyard. Alright, so could play a Herald's Horn and then play a 2 mana Swift Ward and in the opponent's turn. Besides keeping up Counterspell, seems okay. And then now I might want to uh, start attacking. If they replay the Emeritus, do I counter it? Opponent's at 14, so they're getting close to that if I just play the Swift Warden instead. So I might just hold this Daneful Stroke for some big play like a River's Rebuke that they might pick up next turn with a Midnight Clock. And then there's a chance the Warden can ambush the Reachery if that attacks. Hmm. 
All right, so ambush successful. Get to untap. And a guardian project, sadly not a merfolk. Okay, so heralds would make these two unblockable. I could then also add counters to the entire team to guarantee lethal next turn. And with Disdainful Stroke countering a potential Rivers Rebuke, that might be the plan. Just put counters on the entire team, keep up a counter spell, and then next turn attack for the win. Alternatively, I can force a Chum Block, although not that the extra cards matter if the opponent's dead. Unless they can pick up lots of cheap bounce spells. So it's a close call. Think Heralds. Hit them for 9. Draw is also an option. I guess it's even 10 thanks to the extra counter. Yeah, let's do that instead. Just hit for 10, put them to 4, and then I can still draw with Kumina. So opponent gets a fresh hand. Worst case scenario, they have like a Rivers Rebuke plus a counter spell. We almost could have made the playoff disdainful stroke our own creature, just so we can mast vandal blow up midnight clock. Would have been pretty fancy, but we'll see how this pans out. A lionfish, that's fine. Can always try and draw into another counter spell by using Kumina in response. So that's gonna bounce heralds. We'll draw a response. Okay. Five mana left. And our opponent might be planning to counter heralds on the way down. Land is still a good draw. So now I could play Deep Root Elite first. Then play Heralds. If that gets countered, then I guess this only triggers upon entering the battlefield. So it might still be one short if I put counters on Kumena and make that unblockable. But that's fine. So this is a must counter. And Great Shark actually doesn't do it here, because we can just Disdainful Stroke it. So we get to counter the Shark, Resolve Heralds. And this could also add a counter to the Warden, make that unblockable. And we could even make Kumain unblockable by tapping one of the remaining untapped Merfolk. Sweet. So, got to see our blue-green Merfolk tribal deck in action. And yeah, it's a decent tribal deck. Having access to cheap counter spells to back up our aggressive creature plan is not a bad idea. And then we also have some value engines to maybe play the grindier matchups where we can expect lots of sweepers. So a reasonable tribal deck might not be maybe as good as, let's say, the five-color sliver deck that I featured a while ago. But if you like counter spells, then this might be a better fit for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.